this app is to open Google Maps from inside our application, put a marker down at the Musée du Louvre in Paris, and to move the GPS camera to that location and display the spot on the screen. You might be surprised to learn that the code that you're looking at is all that is required to build this simple app. Let's go through it piece by piece. We've created a separate initialize method that separates all the code that's specific to our app. Inside this initialize method, we first create a new intent object. The intent object constructor needs a category from the intent class. For creating a new map, we need to use the action view category. Later in this tutorial, we'll look at how intents can be used to create other types of activities as well. After we set the category for the new intent object, we then need to set its data. Here, we're using a URI parse method to locate some geo-coordinates related to the Louvre in France. Even though the words Google Maps does not appear anywhere in our tutorial, the fact that the letters GEO appear is enough of a clue to the Android operating system for it to know that it needs to open the Google Maps application to handle this data. After we've set the data for our new intent object, we call start activity with this new intent object as a parameter. This forces the operating system to open Google Maps and to do the search located after the queue equals. Here we are running the app on our simulator which can mimic having a GPS inside. We can see that all the features that are normally available on Google Maps are now available through this app. We can even get routing directions to the location of our choice. We are now going to discuss two brief enhancements. The first is that the search nearby feature, which has long been popular on Google Maps, has changed in terms of how it's typically coded. It's become much simpler now. For example, if we wanted to locate sushi restaurants near the Louvre, all we need to do here is put the word sushi after the uh, address. And now if we run the map again, we see that the tutorial uh, is running once again, and this time all the sushi restaurants located near the Louvre have shown up. We can get a listing. We can also look at the map itself. Here's the Louvre. Here are the sushi locations that have uh, been found. Alternatively, we can get a listing and flip through the listing manually. For our second enhancement, we're going to add a chooser capability to our app. Have you ever asked your phone to complete a task and it brought up a list of choices, perhaps a list of browsers for you to pick from to complete the task? What we are doing here is we're by default calling on Google Maps. But what if the user has more than one map activity installed on his or her phone? How will the operating system know which one to use? It would be better if in this situation to give the user the choice about which application to use to complete the task. We're going to do this by creating a second intent object. By using the static method createChooser on the intent class and by setting up a second intent object called Chooser, we've modified the app slightly so that if the user happens to have more than one geolocation app on the phone, uh, a setup choices will show up when this application is running allowing the user to decide which app needs to be used to complete the task. With only one geolocation app installed on this device, meaning Google Maps, we will not attempt to test this chooser function. However, when you're writing your intent objects, it's best to include a chooser if possible. Before we leave this tutorial, let's have a brief look at the developer Android documentation on the intents class and see what other types of activities can be launched with intents objects. And you can see that there are many many different types of intents that are possible. Let's take a look at some of the more common ones. If we wanted to create an alarm clock for example we could do set action alarm as the category for our intent class. Here we are using a timer. The action set timer would be the category chosen for our intent object. We of course are going to be creating a map and so if we move over to the map section we see that action view is the category that we want. It's important to understand that action view is not just used for maps but is used for several other uh, types of event launches on the machine. Let's take a look at a couple other ones.
Here's one we use the same one if we wanted to launch a media player. And here's one where we want to view a contact that's stored in our phone. Once again, we would use the same category for uh, the intent object. Thank you.